cherubim are angelic beings or symbolic representations thereof, mentioned frequently in the Old Testament and once in the New Testament. Welcome to SD Kaysen Courses. Today's lesson covers the cherubim. What are they, and what is their purpose? Let's begin. In philology, the word cherub comes from the Assyrian word kirubu, which means near ones, or personal servants. It was commonly used to describe the heavenly spirits who surrounded God and served him closely, and eventually came to mean angelic spirit. The change in spelling from karabu to kirub is typical in the Assyrian language. There may also be a connection between kerub and rakab, meaning to ride, or merkeba, meaning chariot. However, the late Jewish explanation of a connection between karub and rakub, meaning a youth, is likely not valid. In English, the word should be pronounced kerub, with a Q sound, not cherub, with a soft cheat. Although, most English-speaking dictionaries and most English-speaking people commonly pronounce it cherub, and that is the pronunciation I will use, although it is technically wrong, to avoid confusion. In art, cherub and cherubim are most frequently referred to in the Bible to designate sculptured, engraved, and embroidered figures used in the furniture and ornamentation of the Jewish sanctuary. The Bible mentions the presence of cherubim figures in various places. In Exodus chapter 25 verses 18 to 21, the mercy seat on the ark had two cherubim made of gold. Similarly, in 1 Kings chapter 6 verse 23 and 2 Chronicles chapter 3 verse 11, Solomon placed two large cherubim made of olive wood overlaid with gold in the holy of holies. These faced the holy place or the entrance. The veil of the tabernacle, separating the holy place from the holy of holies, had embroidered cherubim made of blue, purple, scarlet, and fine twined linen. Although we do not know the exact number of cherubim embroidered on the veil, it is believed that two large figures were depicted to represent guardian spirits, or keepers. In 1 Kings chapters 6 and 7, cherubim were engraved as an artistic motif in wood and metal and covered the paneling of the temple both interior and exterior. The brazen sea was also adorned with figures of lions, oxen, and cherubim. In Ezekiel's description of the temple, he mentioned that the walls of the sanctuary were adorned with cherubim and palm trees. Each cherub had two faces, that of a man and that of a lion, with their faces turned towards the palm tree on either side. However, there is no evidence to suggest that the cherubim in the Solomonic temple or pre-Solomonic sanctuary were actually double-faced. Although we cannot determine with certainty what kind of faces these temple cherubim had, whether animal or human, it is sometimes inferred from Ezekiel 10 verse 14 that a cherub's face cannot have been a human one. The face of an ox has been suggested, but this argument is not conclusive. In Egyptian and Assyrian art, it is common to see figures with human faces and outstretched wings attached to their arms. These winged human figures are often used in decoration, with some having hawk heads and others having men's faces. Interestingly, even the Jews during the time of Christ had forgotten what the temple cherubim looked like, according to Josephus. However, the fact that the Bible does not explain them suggests that they were prevalent in contemporary art. According to scripture, Jehovah is surrounded by cherubim in his court above, just as he was surrounded by figures of cherubim in his sanctuary on earth. These heavenly servants are said to bear his throne and are carriers of his divine majesty. In Psalm 17, the psalmist describes Jehovah's sudden descent to rescue a soul in distress, riding upon a cherub and flying upon the wings of the wind. The temple cherubim, who are described as the chariot in 1 Chronicles 18, symbolize the swift-winged living thrones upon which the Almighty journeys through the heavens. The prophet Ezekiel talks about the cherubim in two ways, in his vision of God's chariot in chapters 1 and 10, and in his prophecy about the prince of Tyre in chapter 28, 14. Ezekiel's vision of the cherubim, which is the same in both chapters, is one of the most complicated in scripture and has led to many interpretations. Ezekiel first saw a bright cloud coming from the north that appeared heavy with a light on the edge and intense brightness in the center, like a golden fire in motion. Gradually he saw four living beings with human-like bodies, but with four faces each, one human face in front, an eagle's face in the back, a lion's face to the left, and an ox's face to the right. These beings had hooves like oxen, brass-covered, and four arms with two wings each. 
Two wings were outstretched above, and two were down covering their bodies. The four living beings stood together, each facing one of the four opposite directions, and between them were four great wheels, each double, allowing it to roll forward or sideways. The angelic chariot always looked the same, no matter which direction it moved. Both the angels and the wheels were covered in eyes. Above the cherubim's heads, touching the tips of their wings, was a crystal expanse with a sapphire throne on it. A man's likeness, the glory of Jehovah, sat on the throne. The meaning of the four faces in this vision is not too difficult to understand. The man represents the king of creation, the lion represents the king of beasts in the forest, the ox represents the king of the kind in the field, and the eagle represents the king of the birds in the air. Some people interpret the cherubim as symbols of earthly life, while others believe that they represent the intelligent wisdom of man, the strength of the lion, the weight of the ox, and the sublimity of the eagle. In Christianity, the cherubic figures were used to represent the four evangelists, which is a grand and felicitous thought. Ezekiel's prophecy against the prince of Tyre describes the glory of the ancient city, which is compared to an angel fallen from grace. The king of Tyre is also mentioned in the prophecy. Ezekiel chapter 28 verses 14 to 16 state, quote, with an anointed cherub as guardian I placed you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked among the stones of fire. You were blameless in your ways from the day that you were created until iniquity was found in you. In the abundance of your trade, you were filled with violence and you sinned. So I cast you as a profane thing from the mountain of God and the guardian cherub drove you out from among the stones of fire." Unquote. Indirectly, we can gather from this passage that cherubim were conceived to be in a state of perfection, wisdom, sinlessness, nearness to God on his holy mountain, and preternatural glory and happiness. In addition to their other characteristics, cherubim may also possess royalty and beneficence. Regarding theology, while some advanced Protestant scholars believe that cherubim are simply symbolic representations of abstract ideas, the Catholic Church maintains that they are actually spiritual beings. Evidence of this can be found in Genesis chapter 3 verse 24, where God sets cherubim at the entrance of paradise, indicating that they are ministerial beings who carry out God's commands. This belief is further supported by Ezekiel's description of living beings with the spirit of life within them, as well as St. John's mention of similar beings in the Apocalypse. The phrase, who sittest upon the cherubim in various texts, is also believed to refer to the heavenly throne bearers of God. Later Jews from 200 BC onwards regarded cherubim as real angelic beings, as evidenced by the Book of Enoch and the apocryphal books of Esdras. The Christian Church has accepted cherubim since the beginning and adopted Philo's interpretation of their name. Initially, during the first centuries of Christianity, the cherubim and seraphim were not mentioned in the lists of the angelic hierarchy, although they were considered angels. At first, only seven choirs of angels were recognized, and then the Old Testament angelic beings, like the cherubim and seraphim, were added. It was later realized that this list was incomplete, and the hierarchy expanded to have eight, nine, ten, or even eleven ranks. The cherubim and seraphim were sometimes thought to be other names for thrones and virtues. Since Pseudo-Dionysius, the ninefold division of the angelic order has been universal, and the cherubim and seraphim take the highest place in the hierarchy. Pope Gregory divided the nine angelic orders into three choirs, with the highest choir consisting of thrones, cherubim, and seraphim. St. Gregory explained that cherubim means the fullness of knowledge, and they are called so because they are filled with perfect knowledge of God. In conclusion, this lesson about cherubim should provide valuable insights into religious and cultural beliefs about them throughout history. Whether you are interested in art, literature, or theology, understanding the significance of these angelic beings can deepen your appreciation for the Catholic faith. Thanks for learning with us, and until next time, may God bless you forever.